What's up boys, MKTV here, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going ahead and making my first draft in uh, UEFA Fantasy Football for Euro 2024. If you are excited, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Without further ado, we're going to hop in, make our team, see what we do think. It is a first draft, we're going to make mistakes, and this is not finalised. So without further ado, let's hop straight in things. We are going to be making a mini league as well very, very soon, so check out the videos for that. Um coming very very soon as well so what we're going to do we're going to build a squad probably from um attackers to midfielders um then work our way back maybe just pop in the right players in the right places we'll just go ahead i think the first player on the team sheet again you don't have to copy this team i would recommend going ahead you know taking some pointers from the video um talking through who we think is going to do well on that obviously we don't know who's going to do well that's the fun of fpl um or fantasy football but yeah, the first player I think is pretty obvious. We're going to go ahead. He's in the thumbnail. Kylian Mbappe should be the first player in everyone's team. Um, in my opinion, he's just necessary. You just need to get him in there. He's a very, very good option. Um, and you just you kind of just have to have him in there, in my opinion. You really, really do. We're going to mess around with this as well. So we're going to just keep going while we're doing it. You can be doing your team while I'm making mine. Um, but this is going to be my first draft that we're going to go ahead and do. So yeah, Kylian Mbappe scores loads of goals for France. He's on penalties. He's a really, really good um, outlet as well for winning penalties. If you haven't seen the point system um, for the season so far for this FPL um, Euro 2024, basically anyone who wins penalties, you get two points for that, which is a big, big thing. Um, so yeah, win penalties, you know, he's on penalties. Outside of the box goals, you get extra points. He's going to score a bang load of goals. Yeah, could even be the top scorer. They could even win. France could win the tournament. Going to get Mbappe in there. I think he's a no-brainer. And 11 million, he's probably the most expensive player in the game. But I think he could warrant um, that price tag. But yeah, moving on. Um, the next player that I'm going to pop into this team. I've had a look through the prices and stuff. And I actually am going to go with Bruno Fernandes. Now, at 17% owned so far, not a lot of people have made their accounts yet. Um, but yeah, 9 million. I think he could be a really, really good asset. Um, probably not on penalties unless Cristiano Ronaldo's off the pitch for Portugal. Um, so he doesn't have that. He'd be on most set pieces though, as in corners and that. Um, some free kicks, obviously. Um, and I just think he's a really, really good option for 9 million. Really good um, in a Portuguese team. Links up nicely with Ronaldo. Um, you know, they've some really, really good talent in that Portugal squad. Um, and I just think Bruno Fernandes could be a big, big part of, um, you know, how well they do in this tournament. And I just like him as an option. 9 million, I think, you know, you can go other places if you wanted. But I do genuinely think Bruno Fernandes could warrant that price tag. Um, and 9 million, he's not the worst. You could go with the likes of even, you know, Bernardo Silva here. Uh, 8.5 million, a little bit less owned. Um, but the group Portugal have as well, you would expect a lot of goals. Um, and I'm thinking if Ronaldo's been taken off in a game, you know, getting to that age now as well, we might play every, you know, 90 minutes totally. He could have even started on the bench some games. Bruno Fernandes would be next in line for penalties as well um, for the Portuguese side. So yeah, I've popped in um, Bruno Fernandes into my draft as well. Good form for Man United recently. And I think he could be a really, really good option in this season's um in for the summer for euro 24 next we're going to move on to defenders here um and you can see the most popular defenders selected by percentages and stuff and um, that's exactly what we're going to do so at the time of recording this video rudiger is the most popular defender um which isn't kind of surprising that you know germany at home as well this um this tournament they could be really really good this um tournament they could go on and win it who knows but yeah defensively you would expect them to be pretty solid at the back uh, but the first defender I'm going to be going for and the first defender in my team is going to be Theo Hernandez. 25% owned so far as well as Hungary, the Netherlands and Poland in their group. I just think it's a really, he's a really attacking fullback. He's going to, you know, he's going to win points. He's going to get assists. He could even score some goals. And he has the, um, the clean sheet aspect as well to his game. Just a really good defender all around. Austria in the first game. I said Hungary. I'm an absolute idiot for that. Um, Austria, they do have um and yeah we're gonna pop him in there as well so we've Theo Hernandez um who again really attacking fullback you like that Bruno Fernandez very very good um you know creator for a Portuguese side and Mbappe the main man as well they're the three I have in there to kickstart this team we're gonna next go to the goalkeeper position um and the most owned goalkeeper uh, at the moment in the game is Lunin just because I think he is going to be Ukraine's number one goalkeeper he's high owned um, which obviously isn't, you know, you kind of want a player a little bit less owned, I suppose. But for 4.5 million, he's a cheap option as well. Um, you have to take price into account in this game as well, just because you have a 100 million budget. So we're going to go with Lunin and goals. 
Um, we might, you know, how, how it works in this one as well. It's not like the fancy Premier League one where you have your 11 players and your four on the bench um, and whoever plays on the team plays, whoever doesn't, doesn't. It basically on match days swaps in. So you have to have 15 players that can play is ideally what you would do want to have. Um, so Lunin as well, the fact he plays for Ukraine, not the worst group for Ukraine as well. Um, we're just going to pop him in there. He could get a load of save points. We'll play him in one game. If our other goalkeeper gets more points or has a better fixture and hasn't played, swap him in as well. Just we'll go with that. Um, Lunin as our first goalkeeper in there. So yeah, that's one player from each position there. We're going to work our way back now, maybe fill out the midfield and defense a bit more. Then move on to the forwards, come back. Um, but yeah, I'm liking this draft so far. I really, really am. Some nice players in there for affordable prices and we haven't blown the bank too much yet. So yes, next what we're going to do, we're going to fill out the goalkeeper spot as well. Um, and I've gone for an England goalkeeper. I've been looking at the England defence. I do want to get a part of it just because I think England could be really good defensively this um, tournament. Um, and I think as much Kyle Walker, 5.5 million isn't bad. There's some other options in Harry Maguire, John Stones. Um, you know, the, I don't really know the defence, the, you know, the four that are going to play. Jordan Pickford should pretty much be nailed on without question unless an injury does pop up. So we're going to pop in Jordan Pickford there. England's number one. He's got to get a lot of save points um, like he has been as well this season for Everton in the fancy Premier League. Um, and I just think he's a really good option as well. Rotates nicely with Lunin. They don't play on the same game because they're not in the same group. Um, so, you, you know, one gets terrible points. The other comes in on the next day. So four and so forth. Um, but yeah, I just think he's a good option in there as well to rotate between two keepers and 9.5 um, million combination for the goalkeepers. It's not the worst either as well. You can go someone cheaper um, if you did wish. As we suppose there's even, you know, Diego Costa for Portugal if you want to get into Portuguese defence. Um, having a look at their group, you know, you'd expect them to get a few clean sheets. Um, Neuer as well you could go for if you want someone a bit more expensive. David Rea for 5 million as well for the Spanish defence. Um, you know, there's there's a load of ways you could go about this. You could pop in a Turkish goalkeeper and just kind of like, you know, have only spent nine million. But I've gone with Jordan Pickford for now. Again, this is subject to change as well. I could feel in two days' time that I'm going to change this. But for now, this is what I'm going with. So yeah, moving on to the defense next. Um, again, we're going to just kind of have a look through as well while we're doing it. Um, I do want to get a bit of the Spanish defense. I'm thinking, um, and someone who's been really really impressive this season has been Alejandro Grimaldo. For Bayern, Le Bayern Leverkusen this season. He's been phenomenal. Really, really attacking as well. Um, fullback. And yeah, I just think he could be a good option for us. Um, you know, obviously Italy, Croatia and Albania in their group. It isn't the most ideal group. Um, you probably would expect them to concede a few goals. But for someone who's going to get assists, someone who's going to get up and down the pitch, potentially score goals. Um, I think Grimaldo for 5 million is a very, very good option. Really, really good option. And that is why I think I am going to pop him into the team. Um, he's going to be our second defender and I just think it makes sense you do want players who are going to you know be more attacking as well as po if possible get you some attack returns while getting the defensive returns as well and the clean sheets and that um, and I think you know Spain maybe the, might be the best defensively at least you still have that a chance of a clean sheet while also having the attack and return um, potential as well with a player like Romaldo so yeah 60 million left we have four midfield slots three defense slots and two forward slots as well so we're not doing too badly at the moment um, and yeah, let's move on. We'll actually select another defender now, I believe. Um, I have a few in here as well. So some options. I haven't finalized this just yet. Right. So what we're going to do this one, we're going to do a price and we do want to, you know, we want to reserve as much budget as possible, spend it everywhere. And um, we're going to do a 4.5 million maximum on this. Um, and we're actually going to go for a player who's played a lot recently for Germany in left back. Could be due to injuries. I'm not fully sure myself. I will have to obviously you know, update this myself on this as well. But he has been playing a lot recently, playing for Stuttgart in Germany, I believe. It is Max Mittelstadt. If I am butchering that name, I do apologize. Um, But yeah, if you can get a starting left back for Germany for 4 million, that is going to be unbelievable value. Do not do not hold me to that. But he could be a hidden gem if he does play every single game or plays a lot of games for 4 million. I think we have to get him in the squad um, just to save some budget as well. And you know, if he's a starting German defender in your squad he's attacking as well but if he does even just play defensively i'll be more than happy to get that just for four million so again that could be complete it, it could be terrible like he could be absolutely useless he mightn't play any games um but yeah I'm, I'm hoping he does at least you know even if we got two games out of the three for the group stage for four million will be more than enough um and you can get 
you probably do want a bit of that Germany defense. Um, and if you don't want to spend the luxury price of Rudiger, obviously um, Middlestadt could be a really, really decent option in there for you as well. So yeah, a bit of a question mark around him. But we're going to go with it for now. Um, this obviously is the first draft, so it is subject to change in that. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the next player. We're going to go to the midfield next, I believe, though. Um, we're obviously going to take this off for now. Um, and we're going to work our way through. I think we do want to get a bit of um, England's attack in there. I think England, you have to maybe even triple up on England. I'm not sure. I might double up anyways. We'll see about tripling up. Um, and a player that's just been in form this season. You could go with the likes of Bellingham. 9.5 million, I do think, is a little bit expensive considering he does play a little bit more of a defensive role for England in recent games. Do, that might be the case for the Euros. Who knows? He might be um, in the number 10 slot. But someone who I do think will play a massive part for England this Euros is going to be Phil Foden. He's an exceptional player this season uh, in the Premier League for Man City this season. And if he can carry even a bit of that form into the Euros, he is going to be an absolute gem. So we're going to pop him in there for 9 million. Um, so we have spent heavily on our midfield so far. But Phil Foden has to be in my team in my first draft anyways. Uh, and yeah, I just, I, I just couldn't really go without him. I genuinely couldn't go without him. I think he could be a really good option. Score a lot of goals for us. Get a lot of assists. A lot of penalties potentially, you know, if there's a lot of them with VAR and that. I think Phil Foden could play a massive part in our FPL uh, or in our fantasy football teams for the Euros this season. Next player we're going to go ahead and pop into our teams is going to be a man from an, a nation that, you know, you probably wouldn't expect to go very far in the, the Euros. But I think if there's one player that's going to score goals for this Euros, uh, for this team in the Euros, it is going to be Scott McTominay for Scotland. Yes, he is a tough group. Yes, he has Germany in their group as well. But I think if there's a man that's going to score goals, it's going to be Scott McTominay. We've seen that in the, Euro, uh, the Euros qualifications. He scored an absolute bag ton of goals. I think he was even, was it second top scorer or third or something like that? Unreal numbers. He just seems to pop off for Scotland. Hasn't done it for Man United too much. He's done it a bit this season. Um, but a man who's going to pop up for goals, 6.5 million as well. Doesn't break the bank. Um, and if you are trying to reserve a little bit of money, I'll have to go into the, you know, obviously in future videos, we're going to see if these players are actually really good value or whatever. We'll see how it plays out. Maybe not for the first game week, Scott McTominay, but I'm going to pop him in my draft for now, just because I think he does add, you know, he's good for 6.5 million, adds a lot of value to the team um, and, you know, could come away with some goals. Who knows? So we're going to add Scott McTominay in there. We can't have all the top nations um, players just in there. Want to get a few different nations as well. Um, and yeah, we get Scott McTominay in there, making the team look a little bit more, you know, you've a bit of kind of every nation so far. We've kind of covered a lot of aspects there so far. But let's move on to our second striker slot. So in the second forward slot, um, I could go with the likes of Harry Kane, who does have Serbia um, first up in the group stage. 44%, he's highly owned. A lot of people are going to have Harry Kane. It'll be like him playing at home um, in Germany for the Euros this season. It really, really will be. Could be a massive advantage for England. Um, Harry Kane's going to score goals. He just is. 11 million. He needs to score goals for that price tag. And I think he will as well. My other option is Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, we've seen him in major tournaments before. In the Euros specifically. Top scorer. Um, he just is the top scorer. He just always seems to pop up with big goals when his team needs him. And 19% owned. So actually quite low owned. Again, the, probably the fact 39. There is a bit of a rotation risk um, and minutes risk there with him. But um, his group is not the worst. And I do see him scoring goals as well. I know his age could, you know, people think, will he score goals and stuff? I'm a Ronaldo fan as well. I think I have to have him in at least my first draft. And I will own him at some stage throughout the Euros as well. I think I'm going to go with Ronaldo. I could go with Harry Kane for my third forward slot. We'll have to see how that plays out. But that's who I'm going to go with there in my second forward slot. It is going to be Cristiano Ronaldo. Right, moving back to the defense. We are going to go with a player from Belgium so I'm going to just I'm going to make it kind of easier for myself and just select the filter here for Belgium um, and yeah not a lot of own defenders from Belgium just because probably their defense isn't the greatest um, but I'm going to go with someone who plays for Fulham currently and it is going to be Timothy Castagna from Belgium his group isn't the worst I really like some of the fixtures in there uh, for 5 million he's not terrible either a very attacking fullback as well can play right back and left back so he does you know he probably will play a lot of games for Belgium, we'll have to see closer to the time the kind of confirmed squads and that kind of thing or predicted lineups. 
Uh, you could go with Vertonghen if you want for someone a bit cheaper. But I'm going to go with Timothy Castagna in there. Um, just to add, you know, keep that kind of attacking fullback defenders going uh, in this squad as well. So yeah, we're going to get the Belgian thing off there. And we're going to finalize this squad with someone from a, def a nation you probably wouldn't you probably wouldn't think of you know doubling tripling up or even getting many players from at all but it is going to be from switzerland now kanji probably is going to be the obvious option you could go with coloring goals or coloring goals uh elvedi's there as well probably more nailed on but i'm going to go with fabian Scher. he mightn't play a lot of games i'm not sure the kind of switzerland lineup you'd expect him to play a lot of games considering you know He's a top player in the Premier League as well for Newcastle. He probably will get a lot of game time. For 4.5 million, I think he's a really, really good option. And especially if he does play a lot of games, you know, if he can get it, he's always on for a shot or a header and stuff. He always pops up with a goal here and there. I think he'll be a good option. Plus, the Switzerland defence isn't the worst. They have some decent fixtures in there as well. Um, Scotland tend to not score a lot of goals. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, Hungary as well, you'd probably expect to be low scoring. Again, it's a... You know, it's a major tournament, a European competition. You don't expect it to be predictable. But I think, you know, Switzerland could keep a lot of clean sheets. We'll have to see how that plays out. Next, we are going to be going into the midfield. And we're going to take it off Switzerland for a second. And we're going to go Turkey. We're going to go with Turkey. Um, I just think Turkey pop up with goals a lot of the time. They really do. We're going to keep the budget kind of lower as well. Um, Again, their group is not the best. A player who is going to be on penalties for them if he's on the pitch. Chalanoglu from turkey um you know he just pops up with goals in big competitions and stuff you could also go with arda guler if you want um you know he's a decent option for six million i'm personally going to go myself with chalanoglu um for the moment anyways i just think you know a penalty taker for 6.5 million if he's on the pitch you know turkey get a goal a penalty they have a massive chance of scoring that um georgia in their first game is a favorable fixture for him as well um i would think anyways you know, Portugal then um, and Czech Republic in the last, in the next two. It isn't ideal. You could obviously move these players on. Um, you know, this is the first draft for game week one. We're obviously planning for the futures and more game weeks. But yeah, we're just going to go with um, Chalanoglu in there as well. Want to keep the budget as well. 14.5 million for two players left. Want to, you know, we're a bit cautious with that as well. But let's move on to the second, um, or sorry, the, the final um, midfielder in our squad as well. And it is going to be a player from Germany. So we're going to, you know, keep it kind of, they're the home fixture, they have the home um, advantage in this competition. Um, I'm thinking, you know, with, I could go a, a two ways here. I'm thinking Sané in midfield, who is 12% owned, you know, he's a high chance of winning some penalties, scoring goals. Sané is absolutely brilliant. Um, or I could go Kai Havertz in the forward line and put a different midfielder. I'm thinking for now, though, I am going to go Leroy Sané. That's going to finalise our midfield, which I think is a very strong midfield. Every single player in this lineup should play um, at least a few minutes or whatever, which is very, very good. Um, and yeah, we're going to go Sané then for there for the moment. Again, really, really nice. You know, could potentially score some outs of the box goals. Always seems to do well for Germany. Um, and yeah, just for 7 million, I think he's a, he's a really, really decent option in there as well. Should get a lot of goals. Um, should get some goals. Should get some assists. Um, and just, you know, he's an exciting player. You could go for Verts in there as well um, in the midfield role. But yeah, I'm going to go with um, Leroy Sané in there. And to finalize the team, boys, we are going to go with a player who has known, who is known for doing well at Euro European competitions and specifically the Euros. Um, we're going to probably, yeah, we're going to use up our full budget here. So we're going to use the full 100 million. We could go with Kai Havertz still. We could go with Lamine Yamal. Um, but the player I am going to be going with myself uh, for my first draft, at least, is going to be Federico Chiesa. Italy's probably, you would would say, probably best attacking outfield player, attacking output. Um, probably the highest chance of scoring goals for Italy. Off the left-hand side, can play the right, I suppose, as well. But yeah, that first fixture is mainly the reason I'm bringing him in. Um, just a really, really nice one there at, um, against Albania. I think he could score a few goals to start the competition, get them off on a fly. Could sneak one to go as well um, against Spain, Croatia. There's nothing stopping them. Italy could go far in the competition if they really want to. Um, and if they, you know, if the players all play well and stuff. But that is going to wrap up my first draft. So here we go. This is the team um, and how it would line up for the first week. So basically all I've done is the date. The players who are playing first have obviously gone ahead and captained someone 
from the first week, first set of fixtures, whatever. So Leroy Sané to start with, um, Middlestat, Grimaldo, then the likes of Chalanoglu, Hernandez, who are playing, you know, last um, or the 17th or 18th of June, obviously then will be put after that as well. So that is the team. That's how I'd line it up to start with. Obviously, if, if the likes of Fabian Schär, for instance, got two points in his first game, I can then sub in Chalanoglu um, to go ahead and potentially get more points. That's how it kind of works. I'll do a video as well explaining the rules and stuff if anyone is a bit confused on that. But that is my first draft um, for Euro 2024 Germany. Fantasy football. Um, and yeah, many more videos to come. If you do enjoy, smash thumbs up, subscribe. If you are using any of these players, um, do let me know as well why reasoning of a player you're bringing in, why you're bringing them in. What do you think they can bring to your team that other players can't? How are you using your 100 million budget? Smash that thumbs up and subscribe. Um, and yeah, any other video ideas, leave them in the comment section down below. Massive thank you for watching. And I'll catch you with the next time with the next one. Peace.